All right, welcome back. This is video number six of carving this Santa Claus ornament. I call it a caricature because it's not realistic, but I haven't exaggerated anything really. It's all just been part of what we're doing. So here's what I want to do. I want to start to shape this nose and it's pretty much just a, a mass of, of wood and we haven't done a whole lot to it. And so now what we want to do is again, take these cut marks off of there because I don't really like them on there when I'm carving. And so I'm going to take them off and that'll help me round a little bit. I want to make sure I'm taking off any harsh edges and I want to round it a little bit and then put some nostrils in there. So it comes around here and it's pretty flat here. And so we want to make sure that we're matching that on both sides. And so I'm going back to my gouge and all I want to do is just shape that nose. I'm going on one side of the nares and I'm just shaping it a little bit more than it already is in, in accordance to where the bridge will be and where the top part of the nose will be. So all I'm doing is just shaping it out, making it a little more round. One of the things I like to do is take a smaller gouge and come up the side of the nose and, and give those wings some shape. Nares or whatever you want to call them. These, these edges of the nose that'll need some shape. So we'll do that to both sides. And I also want to carry that cut all the way up into the eye. Shapes that nose a little bit more. I usually take a knife and I take off these sharp edges by just giving an indentation there of the top of the nares, the top of the wing of the nose. And do the same thing over here with this harsh edge. I'm just going to lay that in there. Take off that hard edge. A lot of people have noses where the nares have a slot up here, for lack of a better word. And so we'll do that as well. We'll give that nares a little bit of a slot. Shapes that nose just a little bit more. Now I want to work on the bottom. I'm going to come in with a flexible knife and around the edges of, that, of those wings, I just want to, I just want to define them a little bit more. So all I'm doing is reshaping that area, making it more round. And you can do that in a couple of different ways. You can take off more wood on the side of the cheek. You can take off more wood on the side of the, on the side of the wing of the nose. And so I've got some cuts there to clean up as well. That'll help clean that and make it rounder. And I'm going to come up here and clean it off a little bit. And I like the way that looks. A little bit off here in relationship to the other side. I like how that looks. Okay. So now the next thing we want to do is I want to give some separation between the nose and the mustache. So all I'm going to do is stop cut there. And I'm just going to start taking a little bit at a time because sometimes it takes a lot and sometimes it only takes a little bit. But I'm just trying to make sure that mustache tucks up under the nose. I see some mustaches. My wife and I'll point each other, at, point it out to each other when we see somebody in a restaurant or in a store where they've got a really um, shapely mustache or beard, and we're always saying, "Hey, you should carve that. You should carve that." So sometimes, if you see me somewhere and I'm staring at you, it's probably because you've got a prominent facial feature that I want to put into a carving. Anyway, we've rounded that a little bit. Before I do the nostrils, I always like to get my center line back because I don't want a nostril way off one side and then real close on the other. So I've got my center line here and to the right of that I'm just going to draw two little lines, probably one or two millimeters away. That means this is the inside part of that nostril and this is the inside part of that other nostril. And what it's going to do is come out to here. Now you can do nostrils in a lot of different ways and, and I use a gouge to start with and then I use a knife to shape it. A lot of people do it just with a knife and I'm, I'm, I, I love watching how some people do it. I've got my own way, you'll find your own way. But I'm just going to take this number nine gouge from file and I'm just going to sh shallowly take out a little piece out of there. I don't need much. 
but I just need a little piece. I'm going to, I'll make that bigger later. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, watching my lines. And once I get that, I want to make sure they both match up. And you'll see this one's just a little bit more than that one. So I'll make them match. It's a little better. From then, I like to take my a flexible, sharp knife. And what I want to do is I want to lay that right on that line where I cut and cut up under the nose, back into the nose, just like that. From there, I'm going to take the knife out, reverse the, the, the wood, and what I'm going to do is follow that contour of that nostril with just the tip of the knife. I don't need to take out much. I don't need a big honking hole back in there. I just need to give the impression that that is a nostril. I don't need boogers hanging out of it, so let's clean those up. That one doesn't want to come out, so he's going to get my extra attention. And there's the nostril. You can certainly make them deeper, you certainly make them shallower, but it, you don't need much to give the impression of a nostril. Let me show you how I do that. There's my, outs, my inside line for this nostril. It's going to go straight back into the nose, and I'm going to reverse or turn it. And then I'm going to come out and follow that contour that I already cut in. Take off that chip. That's how it's supposed to come out. I didn't get enough undercut here, so I'll go back and do a little bit more. And that's your nostril. Make sure before you paint it, you cut off all these draw lines you've got on there. But otherwise, there's his nose. Clean up right here. At that, my friends, is a note. I have a few little more cut lines here that'll help me round it a little bit more. Not cut lines, original surfaces, whatever you want to call them when they, when they go through a, a bandsaw. All right. So we've got the eyes, the nose, mouth, mustache. Let's start. Um, oh, one of the other things we don't have, we don't have this, for lack of a word, flop over. So this is the top of the hat with the, with the ball or the tassel, and we'll cut that in. So what I want to do is I want to follow that line, and I like to go up top, follow that line fairly deep in and curve it around. You've made that cut so that you can undercut it and make it look like a piece of cloth folded over. And so... Once you get it cut like you want, what I like to do is then go and undercut it. So I'm going to cut at an angle, and then I'm going to relieve that cut from underneath there because it's going to leave me a shadow underneath there that looks like it's a piece of cloth. And I'm going to do it to both of these. If you like to have some kind of bend in there, you can come back in here and add that bend where that cloth folds over. It's not necessary, but it's just another added feature you can add in there and to undercut that and give it a shadow back in there. Let's shape that bulb while we're at it. Ball, I guess, is a better word for it. I, what I want to do is, knowing my grain is running this way from the top to the bottom, if I cut this way too much, it'll break off a piece. So what I want to do is identify where I want to cut. So from here, I want to cut this way, but leave this as the high point because it's a ball. And so I want to cut away and down as much as I can and being careful not to break it off because it, 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 depending on how the wood is, the grain is running, you could break off a fairly big chunk. If you're worried about that cutting, just do it with a slicing cut. And once you've established the overall rounded shape, then go from that spot in the middle and just round everything away. We're going to come back and we're going to tool it later to make it look like it's fuzzied. Is that a word, fuzzied? I doubt it. And what we'll do is we'll just try to 
give it the overall shape of round so that it looks like the end of that fold over on the hat. And we can come back and piddle play and putter with that a little bit later, but you get the idea. And I'll give you I'll, I'll I'll let you figure that out on your own. Okay. The other thing I want to do is take off this harsh edge. And so I want to come back here, but I got to be careful where the tip of my knife is because if it's too far away from where I want it to be, I'm going to leave a slice and cut in here. That slice and cut is going to be something I have to clean up. And if you're like me, you don't want a lot of cleanup. So if you don't have to, well, it's easier not to have to clean up if you don't make the mess to start with. We'll do that on both of these, top and bottom of this hat. Although we've kind of, kind of done it here once before. We'll come back here and do a little bit more. Getting an idea of how we get a Santa Claus out of this piece of two by two by four split in half. How we get a Santa Claus ornament out of there. From here on out, most of it's just details. <clears throat> Let's do some bags under the eyes. When I do bags on the eyes, what I've got to remember is that the the out the top upper lip, upper eyelid, is on top of the lower eyelid and mean it tucks under. So that means if there's a bag, it has to come from underneath that upper eyelid down, and it follows that original shape that we had here. We had that original shape of that of that O for the eye, and it follows that line. And so we'll do that and just follow that around. Now, I like to just put bags in there, and, and for the most part, I leave them alone, although on some of them, I've got a little, few marks. But for the most part, I don't. I just do that and then leave it alone after that because it doesn't need a whole lot of detail. You don't need Santa looking like his bags have all kinds of wrinkled lines in there because now you're making the man look old. And while he is old, he's still a jolly old fella, and, and his wrinkles should add to him and not take away. So basically what I've done is just outline the bags. I can see that I forgot to tell you to trim off this bottom, the, the top part of the bottom eyelid, because you've got a sharp line there. You want to take that off. And if you draw it, you'll have it on there with your pencil. So you just want to take that off of the tip of your knife. If you feel like it, you can, you can give it a few more caricature lines. One of the things I like to do is out here at the edge, the very outside and, and of the upper and lower eyelids, I like to go in deep and just take out a little bit that shows, emphasizes that that one tucks, tucks under the other one. I like to do that. I learned that from a friend of mine and I thought it was a good technique and I've kept doing that. It just accentuates those eyes a little bit. And if you don't like this, this ridge under the bag, just take your knife, trim that off. Because you that's again, that's another hard edge you don't need. If you want him want to have want him to have a few uh, laugh lines, you can certainly do that. Grab a small V tool. I've got one a little it's not the smallest one. Grab one of those and just add a few more wrinkles out here to the edge, like his eyes are crinkled. You can certainly do that. You don't want to do too many of them because then he looks worn out. But just a few more little cuts in there like that will help give it the impression that it's smiling. Just a few. Crinkles his eyes out at the edge. All right, we're at 14 minutes. What we've got left to do is to tool the mustache, beard, eyebrows and to tool the the hat. One of the easiest ways to tool the hat, at least in the when we're talking about the ball and we're talking about the brim, the part that goes across, one of the easiest ways to do that is to take your number nine. I've got a number nine file right here and I use that to just make random they you don't certainly don't want these going all the whole all the same way once you do that then you're going to come in here like this 
and you're just taking out things that make it look like it's all kinds of shaggy and fuzzy and and you can do that all the way around. I'll, 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 I'll not sit here and bore you to death with me sitting here picking this because it doesn't take very long, but it's kind of boring to watch. So I'll leave that for you to do on your own. The same thing with the ball. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to carve away from the edge or away from the middle. Got to be careful with the way the grain's going to run because it's going to want to split out on you. But you're going to be just doing this random gouge and making the, the ball and the brim of the hat look like, and I'm trying to do this in a hurry to show you, but you're just making it look like it's got tufts to it, tufts of, of fabric. You would do that same thing to the ball. I'm going to, you would do that same thing to the ball and to the brim of the hat. So I don't, again, I don't think you want to be bored to death by watching me do that. So I'll let you do that on your own time. I want to take my small gouge and I just want to give the indica indication of eyebrows. I don't, you don't need deep ones and they don't need to be real detailed, but you just need to add a little of eyebrows and one of the things I like to do is when I do it away from the eye because the eye, eye, eye the hairs of the eyebrow should be pointing towards the tear duct and so these would be pointing more down these would be pointing more out but one of the things I like to do when I'm done is come back with a little lighter hand and bring them over the edge of the eyebrow and so we're just going to add a little bit because we want to make him look like he's smiling and not frowning. But it doesn't take much to do a little bit of hairs. And you can do this with a gouge, you can do it with a V-tool, uh, you can do it with a knife. Just basically whatever tool you're comfortable doing this with. And if one doesn't work for you, pick up another and then do it that way. All right, so we're at 17 minutes and 24 seconds. Somewhere there. I'm gonna end this video because we're just about where we want to go. And then we'll come back and we'll tool the mustache and we'll tool the beard. And I'll do the other stuff offline. You can do that offline as well. And then the th other thing we'd have to do is, is, is paint it and then gouge out the back. I like to take the back out and take a lot of, a lot of the wood out of the back. It makes it a little bit lighter and it makes it look more finished as well. Anyway, we'll end this video here, and we'll catch you on video number seven. Talk to you later.